So this week we're going to focus on color. We're going to make sure that you guys know the organization of the color wheel and we're going to introduce two new terms, complementary and analogous. So check out this video by Design Dojo and then we'll check back in. The element of color. More than any other element, color can have an immediate and powerful impact on us. But color is also the most complex and challenging element to work with. So to make color easier to understand, the traditional red, yellow, blue, or RYB, color wheel provides the foundation for what is commonly called color theory. In RYB, red, yellow, and blue are considered primary colors because these three colors can be mixed to create all other colors, but cannot be mixed themselves. The secondary colors are orange, green, and purple. The secondary colors are made by mixing two neighboring primary colors. So for example, blue and red make purple. Tertiary colors are the remaining colors in between primary and secondary colors. For example, this is blue-green. One way that colors are categorized is by way of their perceived temperature. Warm colors are the colors on the red-orange side of the color wheel. These colors are thought to be more aggressive, making warm colors often a great choice for signage and logos. Cool colors are on the blue side of the color wheel. These colors have a receding quality. To explain, because Earth's atmosphere is blue, as objects get farther away, they get increasingly tinted blue. Harmonies are color combinations that go well together. The big three are analogous colors, which are any three contiguous colors, complementary colors, which are two colors that are opposite each other, and triadic colors, which are any three colors that are evenly split into thirds. Three common color modifications are tinting, which is adding white to a color, toning, which is adding gray to a color, and shading, which is adding black to a color. Lastly, the RYB color wheel it is just the starting point for understanding the world of color. So a lot of that information you probably learned in elementary school. Some of it might sound new and some of it you might not quite remember, but you might recognize it. So this week, we're not going to do a traditional art project. We are going to do a collage, but not one probably that you've done before. This is called a found object collage, where we actually literally go out and find things around our house. We put them together to create a visual picture. And in this situation, we're going to do color wheels and color harmonies. So our week objective is that you will create three different found object color collages to display your color knowledge. So let's see what the first one is. So the first found object collage that we're going to create is going to be the full color wheel. As you can see in the picture, I've gone through my kid's toy drawer and found as many colorful things as I possibly could. Uh, I found some random crowns, I found some Legos, I found some other blocks, I found just some toys, uh, and really like anything goes. Something from the kitchen, your clothes, some art supply, toys, whatever you have, make it work. So as you can see in our full color wheel, we have the entire range and it's all in order, which is the most important thing because color wheels are all organized for a reason. Reds, blues, and yellows are our main primary colors that make every other color in the rainbow. And then everything is organized as how much red or yellow or blue it has. So the closer to red it is, the more red it has. And the closer to another color it has, that color is the more primary color. So you have to find a way to organize it to actually match how much of each of the colors it's in. So let's check out how you're gonna do this. So step one is to go through your house and look for a bunch of colorful things. Here's what I found in my house. I went into my kids' room and I basically just searched for different things that had bright colors. Now, you could do this with just a box of crowns if that's all you have. Be creative. Think about how you can use the things in your house 
whether it's stuff in your kitchen or stuff in your playroom or just your art supplies to make this work. So after I figure out what I have, then I'm going to start to organize it by color. So I'm going to make piles of each of the colors. Now, because I know I'm creating a circle wheel, a color wheel with this, I'm going to make sure that I am actively um, kind of organizing it in that way to start off with. to yellow, to green, to blue, to purple, and then back to red. But my next step now is going to be to try to make it to where it's a little bit cooler of a design, a little bit more organized, and I'm also going to look at how I'm dividing up color. Right now I don't really have my greens organized, so I'm going to try to organize it to be in your primaries, your secondaries, and your tertiary colors. So watch how I do it. secondaries and my tertiaries right where they want to go and I have checked to make sure that I'm kind of in order and it looks pretty good. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a photograph and I'm going to take a photograph so that I can put it into my assignments. Now we're going to number two. Number two is an example of an analogous harmony. So we talked about three harmonies in the video and we're gonna focus on two of them today. Analogous is one of them. So if you look at the picture, we have three colors that are pretty similar. We have green, we have blue green, and we have yellow green, but they all have a commonality. They all have green. And so what we're gonna do is we're taking these colors and we're leaving them together and isolating them to where we just see these three colors together. So what exactly are analogous colors? It's any three colors that are next to each other on the color wheel. So for example, red, red, orange, and orange. It's really easy. You're just going with three colors next to each other and you can pick any three colors you want. So let's see what I did. All right, so now that we have the reminder of what analogous is, I'm going to choose three colors that are next to each other on my color wheel. Now, when I look at mine, I think that the yellow, green, green, and blue, green have the biggest range. So I'm going to do those. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take away all of my colors that are not those and I'm going to shift them out of the way. So I'm left with just my yellow green. And I'm gonna kind of put them a little bit more spread out so I can see all the objects and I'm gonna put them in the best order I can to kind of show that progression. And as you're doing this, if you find yourself wanting to take out some of the objects because they just don't fit, then go for it. It's your project and I want it to represent what you know about color. So now I have my analogous scheme. And again, once I finish each one, I want to make sure I take a picture of it so that I have the documentation for my assignment. Once I take my picture, 
I'm now going to again mess up what I've just created to create the third and final aspect of our found object color wheel project. Um, what you're going to do now is we're going to focus on complementary colors. So let's take a second and remind ourselves what complementary colors are. All right, guys. So I think you're probably doing great at home. This is our third and final one for the week. We're going to use those same things that we were just using in the first and second activities, but now we're going to focus on two colors. Complementary colors are colors that are opposite on the color wheel. For example, blue and orange, green and red, and yellow and purple. You can pick any of these three pairs. And when you pick them, the way you're going to organize them is pretty simple. You're just going to make two arrows pointing at each other to make sure that you remember that they're the opposite colors on the color wheel coming together. Let's try it. Now that we know what our complementary colors are, I've decided to choose the complementary color pair green and red. So now I already have my green down, but I have to take away some of these colors. So I'm going to take out my really yellow green ones, the ones that are obviously not just straight up green at all. And I'm going to take my blue green ones out that are really obviously not just green. Now you'll notice that I've kind of, this just happened, but I want you to try to do this. So I want you to leave this kind of triangular shape because because we want to remind ourselves that they are these opposite colors, I'm going to set it up as these two kind of arrows pointing in at each other. So now I'm going to go back and I'm going to kind of set up and take my red pieces that I found before. All right, so there I have it. I have my red pile and my green pile and I have my two arrows kind of coming in at each other, showing that they are on two opposite sides of the color wheel. And so I'm going to make sure I stop and I take my last photograph. And then you are done for the week. All right, ladies and gentlemen, that was great. I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did. You're going to make sure to take all three photographs of the three different found object collages that you did and attach them inside the Google Classroom in the assignment. If you have any issues doing that, please let us know. We had to help a bunch of students this week with that. And as long as you let us know, we can help you. If you don't let us know, then we just don't think that you're doing your work and we want to give you credit. So if you need us, let us know. You can email us or you can join in on the Wednesday uh, virtual office hours that we have at one o'clock. Remember, weekly art check-in is the nickname. Um, don't hesitate to ask us for help. We set up a bunch of inner uh, interactions through Google Meet to help out kids with different problems they were having this week. And it was really nice to see faces and really nice to help students. Um, we hope you guys enjoy this and we can't wait to see the outcome. We hope you have a great week. We miss you and I hope you're doing well.